Productions. Hey yo, what it do? It's your boy J. Lou, and you are just in time for something new. All right, today in this video, what I'm gonna be talking about is combing your pattern as well as the benefits of it, you know what I'm saying? In order to get better connections as well as to improve your connections for 360 waves. Now with that being said, let's not waste any more time and let's get straight into the video. The comb that I'm gonna be using is called a Cricut Carbon Comb. You can find this comb in the description down below. I'll make sure I leave a link to where you can buy this comb. But at the end of the day, you can use whatever comb you feel comfortable with. The main reason why I like using this comb is because of the wide teeth portion right here, as well as the fact that the material is very, very strong. And one of the benefits of carbon combs, because of the material, carbon combs kind of have a static free uh, property to it, to where it doesn't really create a lot of frizz or lifting your hair up, such as the plastic combs typically do. So with that being said, let me show y'all exactly what I mean by combing your pattern, you know what I'm saying? All all right, now when it comes to combing your pattern, simply what I mean by that is, as you can see on this left side, I have 360s, right? So when I'm trying to comb my pattern, there's two different ways you can do this. You can either comb it in this direction, which means you comb in the direction that your pattern is trying to go in, like that, right? Or you can comb in the opposite direction, basically, combing up just like this. Top. I'm pretty sure I got some people looking at this video like, man, what the heck are you doing, J. Lou? Why in the heck would anybody want to comb their waves like that? Now, most people know about combing against the grain. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to make a video in the future in regards to combing against the grain. But when it comes to combing your pattern, the reason why I do this is simply because what it allows my hair to be able to do is be able to line up with the direction that I want it to go in. Now, when it comes to doing this, you want to make sure you follow the right path. Because if you don't, if you don't know the, tr the pattern that you're going for, you can definitely cause more forks because what you're doing is, is like creating different rows. It's like if you look at a farmer or whatever the case is, whenever they're trying to till the sand, what they do is they go out there with a rake and they basically create all the different rows to be able to drop the seeds in. That's what you're doing with a comb whenever you comb your pattern. You're trying to create the rows to help your waves be able to line up in the direction that you want them to go in. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, I'm going to show you how I comb the rest of my pattern. One thing I want to break down after showing you guys how I comb my pattern, whenever you comb your pattern, what you're going to first notice is not only is it going to show you how your waves are going to form up if you brush the correct angles and everything like that, but whenever you get your hair cut, it'll also show you how your waves will possibly look. You know what I'm saying? Because the longer your hair grows, the more curlier it wants to become. And typically it'll look like you have a lot of waves. But whenever you comb your pattern, it's like an optical illusion to be able to show you how your waves would look if you was able to cut your waves down. You know what I'm saying? Now, one of the benefits of this is whenever it comes to knowing the right angles you need to brush, the lower your hair is, the easier it is to be able to see what angles you need to brush your waves. But the higher your hair gets, it can give you a false illusion because like I said, when your hair start curling up a lot more, what it'll look like is it looks like your waves get smaller or whatever the case is. But at the end of the day, if you want to maintain that you're brushing the correct angles, combing your pattern can definitely benefit you in this area. You know what I'm saying? Now with that being said, I'm going to go into some of the details in regards to the different types of swirls and crowns that you can possibly have. You know what I'm saying? So let's get into it. All right. So as you guys can see, because I have a swirl, whenever I'm doing this technique, 
what I'm trying to do is I'm not going directly into the center of my crown because at the end of the day, I have way more waves trying to go into this small little dot in my crown portion. So if I was to go all the way down, it's not gonna be it's not gonna benefit my crown too too much. You know what I'm saying? That's one reason why I always say you want to start from your crown brushing, and then whenever it comes to being able to get better connections. Because your waves, if you focus on your crown and maintain that your connections coming out of your crown will be good, then the forks that you may have in the rest of your pattern, you can easily get rid of those bad boys by combing your pattern later. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, when it comes to swirl patterns, what I try to do is I'll start right here and I'll comb like right, basically right before I get to my, my uh, crown area. As you can see, I lift it up. I'm not touching my crown and then just comb it out. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I try to do with a swirl. Now, if you have a 360 beehive, that's easy for you to be able to do because all you would have to do is take the comb and basically start off in the center of your waves and then go all the way around. You know what I'm saying? And you can stop halfway and then come other way and then go all the way around your head. You really don't have to worry about your crown in this situation. And this really works well for people that have beehives because of that reason, you know what I'm saying? So when it comes to swirls, what I, what I always say is you wanna maintain the direction that you want your waves to swirl in. You know what I'm saying? You really have to keep an eye on this because like I said earlier, as you can see, this wave and this wave will show how my hair would look if I was able to cut it down. At the same time, if I go to, go to the top, this wave and then this wave basically shows you how my hair would look whenever I was to cut it down. So if I cut my hair down right now, what you're gonna see is it's gonna look like I have a fork like right here because that's the direction that my waves are currently going in. And this allows me to be able to detect what I need to do when it comes to getting rid of forks. Now, most of you guys that's been following my journey, y'all already know, I basically had a, a big old fork that started off back here, but that fork has traveled all the way up to this hairline right here. Now, when I started to do this, what I noticed was by simply combing in this direction right here, it starts to create a separation and help line my waves up to the point to where it's not gonna take me as long to get rid of that fork. And as long as I'm doing the, and as long as I'm combing my pattern the right way, I'll be able to get rid of that fork within a month or two. You know what I'm saying? Now, at the same time, the, with my left side, what I notice is my waves have to go down straight like this. Previously, I was trying to have them go down this way. So in order to fix that, whenever you have forks and everything like that that you're trying to fix, the way I'm gonna comb is basically, I'm gonna start right here and comb how I want my waves to look. So I'm gonna comb straight up just like this. And said, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are wondering, all right, J. Lou, how in the heck do you get rid of this? All you have to do from here, after you've combed your pattern, you can comb for five, you can comb for 10, you can comb for up to 30 minutes, basically combing your pattern. You just simply brush your angles after that. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, this is what, what it's gonna look like. So like I tell y'all all the time, I always use an oval palm. I always recommend using an oval palm or whatever. The smaller the brush, the better you'll be able to get vertical brushing angles with, you know what I'm saying? And this is basically how I'm gonna brush my pattern, basically brush my angles back into place. Now, as you can see, I'm gonna start off and then just simply brush my angles to line my waist back up and to lay my hair back down. that I heard this from was from Hurricane Henry. As I started doing more research, what I found out was this, this is something that a lot of the OG waivers typically talk about, you know what I'm saying? And they don't go into too much detail because it, sometimes it can really mess your pattern up if you don't know how your pattern should look, you know what I'm saying? 
at the end of the day, I would not recommend this for somebody that's just getting started off if you don't know your pattern and how you want your pattern to be able to form. But if your pattern is more so near completion and you're a beginner, then you can try this method out to be able to help your, your, your connections be able to line up a lot better. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, if you are an advanced waiver, you know how you want your pattern to look and everything like that, you can start doing this from the beginning stages of trying to get waves. You know what I'm saying? Now, one thing I have to make a mention of, if your hair is not moisturized, this is gonna make the method a lot harder than it needs to be. So what I recommend you do is before you actually do this method, try to apply some kind of moisturizer or some kind of oil to be able to help your hair be able to return back to the natural lay state that you want it in. After you finish doing this, you can put a do-rag on for anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes or even more. And what you'll notice is you made way more progress than you probably would have in the past. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, this is just another technique that you guys can use to be able to help advance your waves as well as to be able to get rid of forks and everything like that. You know what I'm saying? But if you guys have any comments or questions, make sure you leave them down in the comment section below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And at the end of the day, if you learn something new and you feel like this information can help somebody out, feel free to share this bad boy. But with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy your day as well as the rest of your week. It's your boy Jay Lou. Salute. I was born in the H, raised in the South. Can't tell me nothing by diamonds in my mouth. No. We chunk up the deuce. We keep our top drop sitting sideways on haters. With our trunks pop, knocking pictures off the wall. Or knocking those dimes, draped up and dripped out. Showing us a